Hi everyone and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar where we will be looking at some indices and we'll be looking at some commodities as well. Uh, as always, thank you for your patience. There's always a slight delay but uh, we just have to get the recording set up and the, um, the disclaimer set up as well that I know you can see on your screen. So before we start, please may I just draw your attention to it. As you know, trading can be a very risky business so please don't even think of money, of using money that you cannot afford to lose. I do apologise about that. Okay, here we are. This is me, Anna, and with my uh, with my husband David. At uh, we're not at uh, um, at the trading station that you can see there in the photograph. We're somewhere else at the moment. And as I said, we're going to be looking at the markets. Um, primarily from the perspective of day trading. So we're looking at the faster time frames, we're looking at some non-time-based charts. We're going to focus very much on the indices. And as I said, I've got some commodities as well that I want to look at, and David has uh, as well. From, uh, from day trading, what, you know, what are we looking at? Of course, we'll be using volume price analysis. And in this session, we have our Ninja Trader tools as well. Although, having said that, I have actually got up here uh, my MT5 platform and there's a particular reason I want to do that because I've got gold and silver and I've got the dollar index so that's what I'd like to have There's a particular reason why I want to highlight uh, those two metals along with the dollar index but before we start let me just pass you over to David and uh, then we'll crack on with um, what I've got on the screen at the moment. Thanks, darling. Very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. Good to have you with us today. I was going to say good to have you flying with us today, but you know what I mean. Um, I hope the weather's good where you are. It's a lovely day here. It's nice and sunny, so it uh, makes a change from the weather we've had over the last few days. Um, I can see we've got uh, quite a few regular attendees and also some new people as well. So welcome to you both. If this is your first time, then we do uh, focus pretty much on and then you need to trade a platform. I know Anna's got MT5 as well. And if you do have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. Happy to answer them there for you. If they're short questions, if they're longer, then we will try and answer them on air for you. So I'm going to pass back to Anna. Um, I've got my on the indices. I've got the NQ and the ES running on both time and tick charts. So we'll get to that uh, once we come back over onto this side. So I'm just going to pass back to Anna. And we really can't start the session without uh, mentioning the B word, Brexit. Um, and we've obviously been looking at Brexit through the perspective of the Forex market. But it seems to sort of come up in all for all and give and being um, used as all sorts of excuses for when markets are generally having a swoon and uh, and, and, you know, just it's one of these things that the, obviously it's it's such a huge topic. Uh, regard, even if you're not trading Forex, you will find that it's being mentioned more and more. And I think Donald's just mentioned him, it in one of his, uh, I think he's tweeting out at the moment about uh, progress or not between the US and China. Um, and I also read a, a, a headline, I think it was on Forex Live, that uh, any optimism the market seems to have had about some kind of uh, deal on that side, they're getting a little bit um, a, a little bit sort of cynical about it because it's been something that's, uh, you know, being pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. I think it was all supposed to have been sorted out by last last week and the fact that the um, uh, Chinese premier is not going over to the US. and But that is the biggest you know, um, event, if you like, going on in background. And in the foreground, we have Brexit. And for those of you, I know this, you know, so much been written about it. All, I, all my contribution is this. If you are trading uh, in the UK, uh, where it's Forex or any other sort of instrument that is connected to the UK, and how do you want to play Brexit, as, as it were? There's, a, there's an awful lot of volatility, obviously. But the thing to remember about the 29th of March, and this is this, uh, uh, this this point is made in this article. I have to say, Brexit Central probably gives the, uh, uh, the um, gives you an idea of what the bias of this particular uh, site is, and this is what we also have to be aware of when we read things. You know, what is the bias of the person writing the the article? But um, it wasn't so much because of Brexit Central, is because of the guy who's actually written it, and he kind of knows what's going on 
from the parliamentary point of view, and that is the 29th of March, whatever happens, unless the government sort of um, rescinds the, the, the Act of Parliament, the UK will leave the EU. How it will leave, how it's going to, uh, you know, whether it's going to be some kind of agreement or an agreement is going to be postponed or there is no agreement, that is what is being uh, fought over at the moment. So anyway, that's my two panels worth on, on Brexit. I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of writ things written about it between now and the 29th of March. So with regard to my own um, workspace that I have here uh, on the YM, you can see here, obviously, I've got the daily, I've got the 30-minute chart, I've got the five-minute, and I've got a Renko chart. But what I also have here is I have a yen index because, as we said many times before, the yen is one of these currencies that tells you what is the sentiment of the market. So if the yen is falling and falling strongly, then markets will be in uh, risk off. There will be much more uh, that indices, equities will be rising. So it's always good to have uh, another view of, uh, of, of market sentiment through the prism of the forex market. And what I also have here is our, um, our currency strength indicator. And these two lines are the, are the dollar and the Japanese yen because the, um, uh, the dollar yen is the pair which also correlates with what is happening in indices. Now, what is not such a uh, something you don't particularly want to see, this is just the five minute chart, is when these lines are moving together, it tells you there's a degree of congestion, that there's no strong divergence one way or another. And we really only have to look at, say, the daily chart of the YM. Um, this is the candle that we are trading, you know, this is today's candle. Yesterday was a nice day, it was a nice up day, even the day before was a, a down day. But, you know, we've been um, in this particular session, we are in a um, in a phase of price action, which is very narrow and really not, you know, is it going to carry on higher? Is it going to go? Is it really it's kind of going sideways off this support at 25.5? We've got the all time high. Um, you know, it, it's no wonder a trader, a, investors really are kind of a little bit nervous and worried at the moment. How that actually translates down into the faster time frames is this is the five minute chart that we can see here. The yellow dashed line is our, our volume point of control. This is where we look at volume, price and time on this chart. And really, this really tells you all this is a five minute chart and you know, where is it going? It really hasn't got, um, it really doesn't know where it wants to go. It's kind of creeping higher, but, you know, running into resistance at, at this point here, 25, uh, 25, 7, 50, that level's been tested on, on four occasions. So it's not, it's going to be, a t it's one of the, excuse me, it's going to be one of those tough days, but can I just draw your attention here to this candle? This is the volatility. We talk about volatility all the time. We, you know, there's, we know there's volatility because of Brexit. Volatility comes into the market. It's the compression of time. When volatility comes in, you also get some very fast moves. And obviously, we have this very fast move here. And if you look at these three candles, under normal, you know, circumstances in a waterfall, you've got rising volume, you've got ri uh, widening spreads, and you think, great, that's going to carry on. But as soon as you have a volatility triggered and this is one of the indicators and we've developed this indicator for this very particular reason that is that is outside of its average true range what tends to happen is price then retreats to within the spread of the candle so yes we have this this really nice sort of vpa uh, 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 configuration of, of uh, nice candles rising volume but because you have volatility suddenly injected into the market for whatever reason and with volatility also comes with this momentum what if you understand how volatility works and this is triggered and this move is outside of the average true range it's then a fantastic signal if you like that if you're in this down if you're in this down move is it is a signal just to get out we've used it we see it come in. Sometimes it carries on. It, it'll, you know, it'll it, it'll carry through. It'll re retreat and then move move lower again. And we've seen this happen on a number of occasions. But and also from a, a reversal perspective, this is another. Uh, you know, it's a really nice signal that you can use 
this is where you can use volatility to your advantage and not be caught out. From the insider's perspective, they use volatility and this momentum to trap traders on the wrong side. But if you have an indicator such as this, uh, I don't think of anyone else who, who has one. I've not come across one before. It's also um, triggered in real time. So as soon as these purple arrows are, are, are fired off, you know, you know, this move is going to carry on. But eight times out of ten, I think maybe you know, it could be nine out of ten, but certainly eight times out of ten, this is what happens: the price retreats to within the spread of the candle, and. Um, when you know when we're asked about our tools for you know non uh, forex uh, traders say so, you know if there's any indicator that they think they should you know what should they try with and i said look why don't you try start with the uh, uh, with the volatility indicator it's like 57 dollars as it were right what's happening on the ym as we can see here as i said it looks like it's going back down to the volume point of control and on multiple time frame analysis because i've got the 30 minute chart here um, the congestion that you can see here around the 30-minute chart as well is is another reason why it's not you know this is this is going to be a tough day to actually grind some uh, points out of this market and just to go back on the um, on the volatility we had it triggered here you say well it didn't it did actually retreat to within the spread of the candle and then it carried on and lower what you have to wait for after the retreat is whether the low, if it's on, a, on an up candle, whether the high is taken out. It did go up, didn't go very high, and carried on lower. But if we look at it here, this is a really nice example where we have a, 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 a very widespread down candle, a lot of volume underneath there, triggered. What's nice about this one, it's got a really nice wick to the bottom of the candle. So actually, after the volatility was triggered, there was clearly buying coming in. And that's that's a great signal. You think, do you know what? If you're in that down move, that's even more of a reason to get out because you've got buying coming in and you've got volatility triggered as well. And then we have this little nice move higher. Back on this candle here, we've got the uh, we've got the nice move higher. It's uh, it's through the VPOC triggered again back into the spread of the candle and this time it kind of went it went sideways so you know whatever happens thereafter after the volatility will also depend on the shape of the candle so when you see it on a candle with a wick to the bottom or if it's a wick to the top then that is an, another strong signal as i said and if you were in that down move why would you not want to get out you know so and it's telling you in real time you don't have to wait for the candle to close off is there anything you want to say about that david no, no. Yeah, that's fine. Um, do you want to move over to you, and then yeah, then I'll come back to N T five. Yeah, um, I think I'll you get. To go on to okay, very very quickly. The reason I've got M T uh, the M T five done, I'll just move the chart over here. Is we were looking at gold and silver. We hadn't looked at silver for um, a little while, and what's been really nice about gold and silver is that there's been really some very nice correlation between the two metals even the shape of the charts this is the daily charts this is gold on the right and, and silver on the left and i know uh, we talk about the few obviously the futures here and we use ninja trader we have a futures feed and the reason for having mt5 out and i think we've got it on um next time we'll have trading view up as well is not everyone can can enter the futures market because of the amount of money that's required MT5 is is a nice is brokers who offer MT5 and tra uh, or the Trading View platform is a nice way into futures. This is a, a CFD. It's a it, it's not a futures contract. It's a synthetic, if you like, but it it tracks the uh, the price of uh, of uh, the futures price. But what I wanted to highlight here was first of all there is a nice correlation between gold and silver. Um, the, the, the weakening dollar that we saw here, this was from last uh, Thursday. This was after Draghi, the the, um, um, the dollar strengthened. Uh, we're talking about strengthened considerably. So we had uh, the fall lower. Then we had the the pullback in. Then then we had the dollar falling. And um, we've had the move higher. But the reason I want to show it is because we have another indicator called a Camarilla, and a, a levels indicators to tell us uh, where we think uh, price is going to reach and likely reverse. And the R4, the resistance, the fourth resistance level on Camarilla is, is, is one of the key ones. Camarilla, most traders use four levels. We've actually got six on this indicator. And it's just 
interesting that both on silver and very much on gold, they both kind of stopped dead on the R4. And in fact, um, we've had, a, uh, we've had a, a, a fall lower in both of them. And the reason for having the index, this is actually a version of the dollar index, is it was almost a, it was a mirror image as you would expect. There was a strong correlation between uh, the metals and uh, the US dollar. So as the US dollar falls, the metals will rise and vice versa. And in fact, this was the S4, did actually go through, uh, but it was just very interesting and also an opportunity to show that, uh, you know, if you haven't got a futures account, there are other ways of being able to enter this market. And finally, just before, I just want to have a check on, on the VIX. So we're talking about volatility here. Let's see what the VIX is down to at the moment. Or up, um, it's still under 14, so it's 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 you know it's it's on the low side, um, you know. So that also tells us there's a degree of uh, complacency. The head the headline is a nice headline here. It's a muted open, and uh, as I said, for making pips today, it's um, it's going to be it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. David, can I pass over to you? Just going to move screens over to uh, to my Ninja Trader Eight. Just bear with us a moment, and that should be coming up any second. There we go. Um, and it's certainly a grind today for sure. Uh, let me just start. Let's go back to the um, where are we going first? Let's go to the. Here we are. I've got the three of them running. I've got the YM. Just move that out of the way. <clears throat> Um, yeah, the, the we've got the YM, the ES, and the NQ. These are on the on the daily time frames at the top, and then down at the bottom, I've got them on a five minute um, time horizon. So, um, a good spread of price action. What's been interesting uh, over the last few days, if you've been trading the indices, you'll know this anyway. But the tragic uh, airline crash of the Boeing plane had quite a big impact on the YM and to such an extent, in fact, that on this particular day, the Dow fell, whereas other indices were rising. And indeed, the the general sort of momentum in the Dow has really um, been struggling as a result. And it just, just gives you an idea of how much um, such an event and such a, an impact on a major contributor to an index such as Boeing really has on the overall effects. As, as I say, it's very unusual that you see the indices moving in opposite directions, but we've certainly seen it this week, and that's the reason why. And it also raises another topic, if you will, which is choosing your trading index for the day. And to be honest, I've been on the NQ for the last few days. I, I put some posts up in our VPA traders room about various levels and, and uh, where we were trading and what have you, because uh, we had some, we've had some really, really good moves on the NQ, um, certainly over these three days, and even in here to some extent, uh, but certainly yesterday and uh, this day, it was, uh, it was, I wouldn't say straightforward, it's never straightforward, but it was certainly a market where you had very strong trend direction, you had all the all the various pullbacks as always, but it was really nice to get trend going, get to a level, bit of congestion, look at the VPA signals. Yeah, it's only a pullback. Okay, fine. We'll sit in this one and we'll carry on higher, which is pretty much what we were doing yesterday on the NQ. So that's where we are at the moment. Everything's still pretty bullish, as you can see from the uh, trend monitor at any rate. Um, but what's weighing very heavily today is obviously the data from china so let's just pull the let's go to the uh, let's go over to the uh, time based nqs let's just go to the multiple time base there we are oops sorry where's that gone oh, get rid of that don't want that up there there we go sorry about that um this is the multiple time frame workspace i've got uh, fast time frames across the top i've got three minutes i've got five i've got ten up here down at the bottom 30, I've got the Renko running and over onto the daily chart itself. And as I say, that's the daily chart. Just pull that open a little bit more. Sorry about that. More fingers and thumbs today, I don't know why. Um, 
this is where we're trading and it's pretty narrow and really it's the Chinese data that's put a cap on that. Um, I'm sure there will be other headlines that come out, but that's really the, the headline news, if you will, the slowdown in China. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's lowest figures in 10 years, something like that. So it's pretty significant. And that alone is enough to impact sentiment and to cause markets to uh, certainly pause, may not be enough to make them reverse. Um, Donald's got that power on his on his fingertips, but uh, you know, as far as fundamental news is concerned, it's certainly weighing heavily at the moment. So we're seeing that pretty much reflected in today's trading. So it's no great surprise. Um, we saw it on Globex through the early morning, and it's uh, it's just being reinforced with really it's it's self-explanatory because all of these time frames are really saying the same thing. Uh, let's just pull that back a bit. You can see the extent of the volume on the volume point of control. This is the volume point of control, the yellow dashed line below, and this blue dashed line is a is a strong level of price support, price resistance based on price. But in terms of the volume point of control, it's sitting here. We're trading around it. We've got an absolute heap of volume sitting here. So it's no surprise that uh, you know that's what the market's doing. It's in congestion. And really that's confirmed by all the other time frames. You go down to you know the fastest time frame I've got here on the three minute, exactly the same sort of scenario. The volume point of control is here. There's really no there's no bias, there's no momentum to one side or the other. We just have to be patient. And as I said in the VPA post yesterday, it's just a question of setting the levels, your comfort levels for taking a position once the market moves away from a congestion phase. So it's a question of looking at the various time frames and settling on those areas where you feel, provided everything else stacks up, provided you're seeing decent price action supported with volume and a decent move away from this congestion phase, then what are your good levels that that define where you would consider taking an, an entry either to the short side or the long side. Let's just drop that out of the way, go up to the five minute, exactly the same scenario here. And really I'm looking at this obviously from an intraday a trading perspective. So I'm sitting here looking at this for, for a trading opportunity. To the downside, let me just move the chat box out of the way a minute, there we go. We're trading at a 72.84. So in terms of a, of a downside opportunity, I'd be looking at something that's well clear of 72.70. Uh, and when I say well clear, um, certainly somewhere, somewhere away from the volume point of control. Just bear with me a moment. Hi everyone, sorry about that. David had to um, I had just to step away from the computer for a couple of minutes, but he'll be back. He was talking about the volume point of control, and um, the volume point of control is the that zone on the chart, which really tells us it's where we have the highest concentration of what we call transacted volume. It's where we've taken volume, price, and time. It's uh, it's based on some principles of um, uh, market profile. Uh, some of you may have come across something uh, called the uh, uh, time, is it time opportunity, something TOP. It's the point on the chart where 
at some point the price will actually move away. Now from a, a, a trading perspective, particularly if you are a, a, a day trader, what you don't want to see is when you have um, you know, the, the instrument that you're looking to trade, this is on the 30 minute chart, the, the price action rotating around the VPOC in all the time frames. So you've got the 30, you've got the 15, you've got the 10, and then you come down to the five as well. Because what it tells you is, first of all, you know, there is no, there's no divert, you know, there's, there's no firm direction either one way or another. You're going to get a, you will get a, uh, a perhaps a little breakaway that we can see here. Let me just move that to 30. And it's one of those, it's one of those times when you're trading that can, it can be really, really frustrating. This is the five minute chart that, that we can see here. All we can do is, first of all, be aware of it and be aware that things are going to be tricky. Look at some levels on the faster time frames, because this is at the moment, this is attempting to move away from uh, this, uh, as I said, from this region here, which is uh, you know heavily populated with what we call transacted volume. It's where the buying and the selling just keeps going backwards and forwards, but there's not enough to push it in one way or another. And breakaway trading, uh, a breakout trading is something that uh, most traders find it has a bad reputation because it has a lot of fake outs. That's the, that's the downside on it. The upside of it is that in fact, um, eventually nothing stays in congestion forever. And what it also does these regions, it also helps you, to, it helps to provide you with some natural regions of where you are going to put your stop loss, for example. So. Having spoken to a lot of professional traders in the past, what they say is, is don't be afraid of uh, moving away from uh, something like a, a volume point of control from a congestion region, because even though the price may come, come back and, and retest it, because you can afford to put your stop loss at quite a tight, on, on, a, uh, on you know, a tight, a small number, yes, you are maybe going to get a lot of small losses when the price actually does take off and it looks like it's going to looks like it's moving higher here and what we want to see as always we want to see the price supported by some good and rising volume so we've got here you've got this up candle here a little bit more volume than the one under here this is a, a, a nice candle we want to see with a wick to the bottom of the candle so we've got some price support coming in whether that's going to then you know carry on higher the, the issue is you've got that nice little move higher, but because you also use uh, multiple time frames and because it is also stuck at a volume point of control on a slower time frame, what it tries to what is telling you is that you may get a chance to uh, to take a few points in the faster time frame, but it is going to be it's going to struggle. It's not going to be a clean break. And you can see clean breaks. You can have a look at the at the charts and you can see the times when it did break away cleanly on rising volume and you've got a nice and you've got a nice trend developing as well. And what you don't want to see here, this is the 30 minute chart. We've got another we've got a few more minutes before this uh, closes off, is we actually want to see rising volume under these candles as well. So here we are back on the on the five minute chart and we've got some buying coming in that's not too bad we'll see how this one ends up as well and the other thing is with the uh with the support and the accumulation and distribution indicators that we have for ninja and also uh, the the histogram that you see back here are all part and parcel of the vpot because the volume point of control is not just the fulcrum on the chart it also gives us um it's support and resistance from the perspective of volume, which we don't have anywhere down on this volume histogram. And what we can see here, these are uh, these are levels based on, as I said, volume. And what we want to see from a positive point of view is we want to see the price break through these regions where obviously the transacted volume is is, is quite thick and it's it's quite heavy. The heaviest concentration is always around the VPOC. But what's always encouraging is when it reaches these 
low what are called low volume nodes because if it does manage to get through that to that low volume node because there's less resistance in terms of volume that should go through in a reasonably a reasonable at a reasonable speed as it were if this were going to the downside for example and it had broke to the downside first of all it would hit this support line here which is quite a strong uh, a strong area because it's a thicker hatched line but what it also would do is it would be going into an area which is a high volume node and here the price would it have a bit of an effort it have a bit of a struggle it would need extra fuel from down here to actually move through now the good news is if it gets up to here this at 27 25790 uh, there's a good chance that it will carry on and it will carry on higher with some a with a degree of momentum could also trigger a volatility candle and if it does we know what's likely to happen with a volatility candle but this little move that we're seeing here although you know as i said it's around the vpoc and also at the vpoc in all the time frames moving higher let's move on to the 10 minute here let's see what's happening you'll find the move away yep got a nice big up candle there as well um not so you know the volume profile here it's not a, a low volume, it's a little bit of a low volume node here, then it runs into uh, a deeper volume node here. And, you know, where is it potentially aiming for? Well, you've got here, you've got 25, 25, 8, 20, David? What do you think? 25, 8, 20. So by understanding, first of all, the price cycle in terms of how price moves from, uh, it has a reversal, goes into congestion phases, you've got accumulation, Got distribution how that applies on the chart itself and you've got um, uh, you've got an indicator such as the VPOC because we've introduced volume into the price cycle on the chart understanding what it takes to actually get through these regions of high a uh, uh, high volume node and what is what is likely to happen if it reaches a low volume node and also understanding about volatility and that's on top of your candles your candles and candle patterns actually when you start to sort of put all these elements together the price you know what you see on the chart actually begins to make sense and you think Do you know what it's not as complex as perhaps people make out and what we have here is the yen index we want to see that fall and we want to see it fall. you know it's got it's got through that support line there that support line there you know there's this huge up bar here which was probably a volatility candle um you know and if, if it had the vpoc on here we can't apply vpoc an indicator to an indicator the fall could be quite rapid quite fast and you know and that also gives us a sense of where this price is likely to go i've actually actually got it on a renko as well also moving away from the VPOC, it gives my levels of where uh, potential price targets, stop loss, the big advantage of the VPOC is you know where to put your stop loss because it's where the, you know, the market is telling you it is the safest place to do so. And as I said, around the VPOC, you can afford to have a much tighter stop loss and your losses would um, would be uh, much you keep your losses much smaller and if it does go off in a nice run uh, you should be able to take out some decent pips and on the daily chart let's see here it is clearly trying to rise at the moment so you know all things considered why not it's um looking sort of reasonably okay david is there anything else you want to say to that no i'm not sure Just going to change over to uh, back to the ninja again. Sorry, I should have said something. Oh, hold on. Richard, thank you. I couldn't. Try time price opportunity. It's TPO, not time opportunity price. Thank you so much. Just switching over to ninja. There's a nice move going on the ES on the tick charts. Just want to uh, grab that while it's still going. Sorry, and I forgot to click the button. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. That's it. Just want to 
get you in on this one as it's moving. The ES uh, starting to develop nicely on. It should be able to see my screens. Basically, I'm on the tick charts now. Um, exactly the same approach, multiple charts. Uh, down on the left here, I've got the one minute, the three minute, and the five minute on the tick speedometer. So that's delivering my tick settings, which I've got 987, 2584. And this one has just increased to 6765. So we'll just put that one in. There we go. So we're looking at the right, uh, the optimal settings for the tick charts. Most traders guess we use the tick speedometer, which delivers it automatically. And you either choose this one or the actual. The actual change is very, very fast all the time. So I tend to use the uh, uh, the closest to, which is this number here, when I'm trading with both markets running as we are here. And the beauty of uh, tick charts is you see the momentum as the market speeds up and slows down. That's what a tick chart is all about. Exactly the same with the Renko. Exactly the same principles. It's not based on time. Completely independent of time. And this is set at four. Again, this is automatically delivered by the Renko optimizer. It, it tells you the optimal setting for the ES right now in this session. And that is telling me that I need to be set at four, which is basically four ticks, which is one index point, basically. And it doesn't matter whether it's on an, on an ES or a YM or an NQ or gold or oil or anything else. It'll automatically deliver the optimal setting for the appropriate uh, measurement that's used for an index or uh, dollars per ounce or dollars uh, per barrel or whatever it may be. Just coming to a bit of a pause point. Just looking at the volume profile upon one. <clears throat> and the tick speed os oscillates between these various colors. When you've got high levels of participation activity, you get the green. So you know for a fact this uh, price candle here, good volume, good activity, good support. Got some weakness coming in here. Why? Because we've got uh, high volume come in, relatively high volume at any rate. We've got a uh, little bit of price weakness. Markets tried to rally. We'll see a little bit of a pause. Probably not enough to roll it over, but certainly a pause point. That's what you're expecting to see because you understand volume and price. Down onto the three minute. This is the three minute time horizon. Just pull that open a little bit. You can see the buying that's come in to push that market higher. It came in here, high volume. Market dropped, closed above the open, good volume support. It's rallied higher. Now we're seeing the pause point, but that was enough to take you from where 16 up to 20. That's four points. That's a good haul for uh, an index trader on the oh, ES. Yeah, Anna says she knows a trader who just does four <laughs> points a day on the ES. That's it. Done and dusted. So be off home by now. <laughs> All done. But then, of course, it depends how much cash you've got rolling on each uh, tick, whether you're trading multiples or just one. Big difference, of course. Let's just go back to the time-based charts for a minute because we've got the NQ running there as well. Doing pretty much the same. It's trying to rally. It is all being held down by the Chinese data. It's bound to have a huge impact. You know, the market's not roaring away. It's um, it's positive. It's bullish, but it's not uh, it's not rising with great strength at the moment. We are moving away from the uh, volume point of control. And what I was saying earlier on about setting levels um, on a 10 minute time frame, which is this chart, we are trading. You know, we're still pretty close to the volume point of control. This yellow dash line here. So it's a question of looking at the chart. Just move that out of the way. It's a question of looking at the chart and deciding at what point you are comfortable getting into a trend if it develops. If it develops the upside, are you comfortable getting in through this level or are you concerned about all this price uh, resistance that could come into play over here? Would you be more comfortable waiting until the market got up to this level, for example, up at uh, 73.10? Because once you get to that region, First of all, you're well away from the volume point of control, so you know that there's bullish momentum developing. But secondly, through this region, there's very little in the way of price resistance. And above, you've got low volume nodes all the way up to 73.20. So you've got a decent run from here. And obviously, you'd be looking at that on slower time frames as well, just to get a fix on, on how much clear water there is. So it's very much a personal choice. You have to set those levels. You have to look at the chart. Look at the various time frames, see what's going on in other time frames. We're seeing the market uh, continue higher. You'd be looking at this chart, for example. We're on three minute. 
What are the barriers to progress on the three minute? Well, we've got some pretty strong resistance here, at potential resistance at 72.96. We'll see if that's tested. If it's going to go through there, it's got to go through there with some volume. But once we're through that, boy, oh boy, there's very little. There's a low volume node, a little bit more here, but not in much dimension, and certainly nothing in the way of price resistance. So if we get through 72.96, we could go up to 73.10. So, you know, that's what you have to look at the whole time. We've got a little bit of price resistance here. It's, it's minor. Um, it's, it's caused a little bit of a pause. You know, the, the market is not, it's not roaring. It's, 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 it's not struggling higher, but it's certainly not uh, rapidly rising. It's just, it's got bullish sentiment. It's got bullish tone. It, it's trying to rise. And it's just a question of how far, that is going to rise before the weakness weighing of fundamental news from China, you know, brings it to a halt. It's not supportive news, in other words. Let's go back to the ES, see if that's... Uh, that's paused as well. <clears throat> see if the tick values have changed, they've come off a bit. We're on 610 on this one. This one, we're on 1597. No, we're fine. This one's on 6765, so that's fine. And we're still running at the right speeds. But you can also see that the tick speedometer itself has gone into red, particularly on the five minutes. So we're in a phase of lack of participation. Volumes are falling away. Same on the three minute. And we're seeing it on the one minute. And at those phases, you will expect to see the price move into congestion because you've got a lack of participation. The two tend to go hand in hand. So until we go back to orange, which is your your average, your normal speed, if you will, and then injections of green, which signal injections of, uh, of activity, of volume, then it's a question of waiting and being patient to see if this is going to rally further. The trend monitor... We've gone into a transitional color down on the fastest 610 chart, but up on the, the 1597, the slower ones and the 6765, we're still in bullish phase for the time being. We've got some pivots coming in here, though, on the top here, which are suggesting some short-term weakness, which is not really what we want to see. Let's go back to the tick speed. Oh, sorry, we're on the tick speed. Beg your pardon. Let's go to the time again. There we go. The NQ whilst it has paused it hasn't actually reversed for the time being but it's certainly exhibiting the same sort of characteristics as the es we hit that uh, so that's been tested and that strengthened that region a little bit and we've got this region above here but as i said before if we can get above 7296 7297 let's say then that should give us a good platform for a run higher for 10 15 points maybe if it's going to extend that far. Down on the 30, that's just giving us another view and telling us that we're trading around the volume point of control on a slower time horizon. So it's really just reinforcing the fact that that's where we are, that's what we're seeing, and it's no great surprise. What we saw coming in at the start of the session, which is here in this region, quite a lot of buying, big move to the downside, ton of volume coming in at the open as, as we always see and a certain degree of buying certainly in there and more in the following candle as well. Then we had two long-legged doges. They're not indicative of, of direction. They're just indicative of indecision. No big surprise. Market's a little nervous. We've had a long bullish run for seven, eight weeks now and you know quite a bit of nerves around certainly with the, the China news. But that's just trading around the VPOC. So it's telling you again, you know, be aware of what is going on on a slow time frame vis-a-vis -vis what you're doing on your fast time frames up here. Be nice to claw through this and be nice to get through 72.96. See if we can get, get that high. If we, we need to get above this previous candle, which hopefully we will. It's just testing that level again. Hopefully we'll get a close above it and not on it. Let's just see what happens with that one. So 
Here we are on five. And on five, we've got a couple of levels here around the sort of 72.95. So there's quite a bit of price resistance there. But once, we, if we can get through this region, then we've got some decent volume here, but it does fall away quite rapidly. So it's really a question of getting through the 72.95, 96 area. And if we get through that with a decent close, then you know we could see um, a further move higher. And of course, you've got to keep that in context the whole time. Now, this tiny little probably can't see it very well but this is a tiny little sliver of price action up here is where we're trading at the moment so it's it's very contained but nevertheless there is money to be made it's just harder work today than it has been the last few days and you've just got to keep your wits about you and just be aware of of what is going on in the slower time frames let's see if we just got through that yeah we didn't close above it but we seem to be pushing through it on this one with a bit of uh, a little bit of effort. As I say, this 96.97 is really the 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 key level. We're testing this level on three now. In fact, two levels there. We're testing at uh, 75. So it's all around this region. Trend one is this bright, bright blue. So we've transitioned from the red through to the dark blue into the bright blue. So that's helping us. We're in bright blue on the three, on the five, on the 10. No flicker on 30 yet, too far away. But certainly on a faster time frame perspective, if we're trading this as an intraday scalping trader, you know, we're pretty comfortable at the moment because we've got trend monitor blue across three time frames. Just head back to the ES, see what's going on there, my ticks. Okay, that's come to a pause on the ES. Now the question is, is the ES leading the NQ or is the NQ leading the ES? Short answer is, I don't know for sure. Um, but over the years, the NQ tends to lead, particularly in growth scenarios where the economy is doing well, particularly in the early phases, obviously. But you never know for sure. It's always a reason to have all three indices running in parallel. Whatever you're trading, whichever one you're trading or you're trading any of the others, you're trading the Russell, whatever it may be, have them running in parallel. Because they will all tell you something. Right, okay, we're going to run up to 96 now, test the 96 area, hopefully with a bit of luck. <clears throat> Just be aware how tight we are on the VPOC down here. You know, we're, we're not a million miles away from it down here. So whatever you're doing up here, just be aware of what's going on down here. Be aware of what's going on over here. This is the region we're trading in. Not quite a razor blade, but it's not far off it. been tested again held it's going to test it again <clears throat> this is the accumulation distribution indicator on uh, ninja trader and basically what it does you may not be able to see these little numbers here there's one there this is a number five in other words this has been tested on five previous occasions and held so it it displays as a wider line a much broader line this blue one down here was tested twice. This was tested once. These others back here were tested once and twice. So whenever you get a thicker line, you know for a fact it's a thicker region of potential price resistance or potential price support. This is traditional price resistance and support from a price perspective, whereas the volume point of control up this on the histogram here looks at price resistance and support from a volume perspective because when you run into these areas of high volume then the market is going to it's going to have a problem getting through there because there's a, there's a concentration of volume orders sitting there either executed or not executed uh, all sorts of different orders 
And once you get clear of that region into this, this lighter area, much lighter area of volume, then you know for a fact there's fewer um, participants up there who are either stranded from earlier or whatever they may be, all sorts of various orders. You know the market's going to get move through there, potentially move through there a lot, uh, a lot smoother, a lot more quickly. See how it's struggling? It's hitting this level. <clears throat> The volume's rising under those last two candles, which is encouraging. So we've had two pretty similar candles. Volume's fine on that one. We've got higher volume on the next one. So we're trying to drive through here, but uh, it's it's having a bit of a battle at the moment. Just cannot get through. On the five minute, we've cleared we've cleared ninety four. So we're sitting on that one as this candle forms. So that's encouraging. And the further we get away from the VPOC and the further we move into this region, the lighter the volume becomes. So the easier the journey should become for a march northwards. Just go back to the tick charts for a moment, see what the ES is doing, whether it's actually following suit or paused. <clears throat> Still pretty much in red, not a great deal of activity. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just switch off for a minute. Not much activity on the ES, I'm afraid. It's it's dying. And these numbers here are very low. 610, 1597, and 4181. This needs to be stepped down. 4181 are very low for the ES. Should be a lot higher than that. Nevertheless, it's bullish. You know, it's remaining bullish for the time being, but it's very sluggish. You want to see an injection of green, injection of activity to blast it through to the next level. Exactly the same principles on the tick chart as, you, as on, on a time-based chart. We've moved well away from the VPOT, which is good. We're moving up into an area of low volume, which is great. So to push on higher you know, is not going to take sustained volume, just regular volume to push it through there. Okay, this has gone back up again. So, you know, the, now it's gone back to 41.81. Fine. Okay. That's okay. Let's go back to NQ. Let's see if that's managed to get through yet. No, nope, still struggling. We've gone through on that one, but we're still struggling on this one. Let's try it again. That's failed again. But this region is getting literally, so it's it's literally getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's a bit like Popeye. The more uh, spinach he eats, the stronger he gets. It's the same here. Yeah. It's just testing, testing, testing. You know, we crawl through this level here, a little bit of support. And it's just, you know, there's another one here immediately above it. So you've got a double double resistance here. We managed to kind of get through the first one, but the second one's kind of bring it, brought it to a halt now. And you know, it's just not enough to get through. What's interesting on the volume perspective is you look at this candle. Okay, we've got little wicks top and bottom. That's fine. We've got some good volume under there. Uh, sorry, this one here. But then we get to the next candle, which was this one, half the spread and higher volume. So that alone is telling you that there is some weakness here. This is not a good sign. If you see that, you think, mm, actually, do you know what? It's not a terribly strong signal because this price should be up here somewhere. That candle should have replicated this one at the very least and possibly a little bit more if this volume is your benchmark for that particular piece of price action. And there's no reason why it shouldn't be. So this alone is giving you a heads up, little signal. It's an anomaly. You've got a narrowing spread and you've got higher volume. So, you know, expecting some weakness. Plus it's reinforced with the price resistance that you've got layered in here as well. And we're seeing that on three minute, as you would expect. This is the region. Very strong now. Uh, tried to break it again. And, uh, you know, we've got some, some reasonable volume coming in under that one too. So... 
it's not it's not ready to go up just yet equally we've got a little bit of potential support here might come into play it's only a relatively minor it's a it's a two times uh, it's a bit like conkers actually it's a it's a tour so you know this has been tested twice and we'll see if it uh, if it holds if it doesn't then you know it's not going to provide some support oh sorry anna said you probably didn't understand that forgive me um conkers are um they're from the horse chestnut tree and as children, all the children here, here pick them up in the autumn and do all sorts of things with them, like put them in the oven, um, soak them in vinegar for months or weeks on end. And then you drill a hole through the middle and put a string on the end and you play conquer fights with uh, your friends. And uh, if you if you beat her, yes, you probably have to wear safety goggles now. And if you manage to win and you beat someone who's got a, a tour, then yours becomes a tour, and then you go off and play somebody else who's maybe got a fiver, and, you, and so on and so forth. It's very, very English, I think. I don't think anyone else does it. Not mad enough. I've got a pivot up here now, forming, and uh, you know, possibly a two-bar reversal on 10, which wouldn't be a great signal because you overlay that one on that one and on a 20-minute chart, that would be an upthrust. So it's all about finding the levels, your comfort level and the technical level that you will be happy to get into this trade, knowing full well that this is a tough, tough market today. This is not a straightforward market. It was yesterday. It was just a question of where you got in and taking you know, as much as you could and sitting through the, the usual pullbacks and reversals, which are part and parcel. But today is very, very different and pretty much as expected. It may change later. Who knows? That will only be dictated by volume. It'll be dictated by the various levels on the charts, etc., etc. Uh, yes, I can. Anna said you want to. Yeah, let's just head over to commodities just for a change of scenery. Um, this is oil that uh, I've got on uh, similar sort of time frames. I've got five. This is the uh, when we're on April. I've got the five, the 15 and the 30 minute. Um, it's not doing anything very exciting today. Down the bottom, I've got 30 minute, the daily and I've got the Renko set up and running as well. This was the daily. We did a post about this yesterday because um, it was given an injection on the weekly oil inventories, which came in with a with a good draw, which was totally against what was expected, which was a build. So that gave it a nice bit of impetus. And from a technical perspective, not fundamental, but certainly from a technical perspective, uh, we saw this candle moving uh, up well through this region here, which is a very strong level of resistance. We wrote a post about it and we suggested that oil was now set for a decent move higher, purely because you've got some very strong platforms below. Not least of all is this one, which is extremely strong. Uh, you're moving well away from the volume point of control. And more importantly, you're moving up into an area where you've got very light volume here. You've got low volume node. So a move through here should be pretty straightforward for oil, all things being equal. But of course, that can change at any minute with uh, OPEC and all the rest of it. For on an intraday perspective, it's pretty much the same as for the indices. Volume point of control, volume point of control, volume point of control, not going anywhere at the moment. And to add to that, over on 30, we've got a volatility candle triggered. And, and as Anna was uh, highlighting on the chart she was looking at, you know, as soon as they're triggered, your expectation is, the anticipation is, you're gonna see some either pause point or reversal so when you get these, then the expectation is that the market's at least going to reverse back inside the spread of the candle. It doesn't always, but as she said, eight or nine times out of 10, it does because it's associated with volume down here, the market makers in this case, the big operators, and it's associated with a rapid price move. And all that's happening in volatility is just a compression of time. That's it. It's nothing else. It's nothing special. But what's happened is the price has moved from 58.30 to 58.65 odd, which normally would take place over, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And all that's happened is that price action has happened over 30 minutes. So time's been compressed and the volatility is triggered. We've moved outside the average true range. Therefore, we expect the market to reverse inside the spread of the candle. 
And moreover, you've also got the volume point of control there adding to that analysis, if you will, the uh, congestion until we break away through. Again, it's back to levels. You know, looking on this particular chart, 58.70, 58.80, if we can break through that level, then we've got, uh, you know, some, some potential support below and, uh, you know, potential move to the upside. Okay. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point. Uh, forgive me if I haven't answered any questions. Oh, <laughs> Melanie, yes. Oh, are they? Uh, they're now banned from playing with them. It's blimey. It shows you how old I am. Um, Anna said they probably have to wear safety goggles. You're probably right, but it's even worse than that. So uh, thank you for that, Melanie. I appreciate it. You're more in touch than I am. Um, grandchildren haven't got to that stage yet, but um, they'll be out there. We can play with them at home. Right. I'm passing back to Anna. Thank you. And uh, actually, I've been watching, as I said, the YM. What's really been interesting is that um, it's been been a bit of a struggle up until now. But the um, what's been encouraging is the yen index has continued uh, falling, although not as fast as I'd, I'd thought. There's been a little pullback on it. And what we've also seen is a nice bit of divergence, actually, on the dollar yen. That is also uh, positive for equities and indices and getting back to levels i've got the 15 minute chart here you know i said it was 25 7 70 something like that you can see here on this chart there's uh, quite a strong resistance there and it's sort of trying to sort of battle its way through at the moment i've got the renko here it's got the same level on the renko the interesting thing about the renko is the trend dots have changed. We had a red one there, and there's a red one buried in this um, uh, in this candle here. And we've also got a range that's uh, been pulled up by the Renko by these little uh, pivots. We've got a pivot there, a pivot there. So we're kind of in a in a in a kind of we are in a sort of congest small congestion, but with a you know with a an up still an upward bias because we've got the trend monitor is still blue. As I said, it's not that the price isn't going to go higher. It's just it's just the the tone uh, of the day, and it's going, as I said, it's going to move, but it's going to be a struggle. And certainly, when things are in congestion, traders do get very very nervous. But if you use multiple time frames, and you understand, you know what is we could have volatility suddenly rush in at. Um, you know, while we're speaking, if you understand that, you understand the kind of candles that uh, uh, the candle and candle patterns that are that are forming, and you've got the daily here. You can see, the, you know, we're in this tiny slither at the moment, but you know, we have to be, we have to work with what we're what we're given. What do they say? You're given lemons, you make lemonade, and it's certainly one of those one of those days today. And we can see here, certainly on the Renko. Uh, they're sort of sideways, but you know, it's still it. It feels like it wants to go up, but it's kind of creeping higher. And this is what you often get when uh, markets are approaching levels, all-time high levels. They get very, very nervous, and it's always going to be, it's always going to be a struggle uh, when markets are in this uh, sort of state, as it were. And um, you know, markets always fall a lot faster than they rise, which is why so many traders, not mentioning names sitting opposite me, like trading to the short side because you're in and out. You know, you can't um, you can't keep the market frightened forever, as it were. Just have a quick look at investing.com and see where we are. And we can see here, we've got the Dow's only up 30. Uh, the S&P futures, that's showing a, a sort of slightly down. The Nasdaq has, these are very small numbers. The S and P is still under um, uh, 14. It was down at 13.20, I think, at uh, while we were speaking. So, you know, that's that's the market state that we are in today. So we just have to watch the charts, uh, understand what's happening, and uh, and if something changes dramatically, and you think, right, I'm out, that's it, and you take a, a maybe a um, a position to uh, the opposite side. Right, very quickly. Just wrap up very quickly. Thank you so much, as I said, for coming along. If you've not been along before, the indicators that we've mentioned here are from our own company, quantumtrading.com. These are the ones for Ninja Trader. And the one that, as I said, I really, I, I strongly suggest that you um, 
certainly investigate for $57. It can really help your trading no end. And that's the volatility indicator. You can just click on the uh, front page of quantumtrading.com. It'll take you to this page. There, were, there are lots of videos actually seeing the indicator in action, triggered in real time, explain how you can use it, what tends to happen when it is triggered. And as you see here, four, the videos are there on Ninja Trader. I tell you, it's just, as I said, if any people ask us, you know, what indicator aside from Forex, I, we would say, David, would you say the volatility? The volatility above all else. And anything else you want to say to that, David? That's it. Yes, we are back next week now, back on Tuesday. And then we're back next Thursday as well. So enjoy the rest of the trading day and we will catch you next time. Take care.